This is part six of my Cycles, Materials, and Nodes tutorial series for Blender. And in this lesson, we're going to look uh, mostly at the performance of the system instead of the things you can actually do with it within uh, Cycles. Because Cycles takes advantage of the GPU if you have it enabled. So in here, within the Render tab, down here under the, the device, you can have it as CPU, which is the default setting for your computer. Now, if you want GPU, you have to set it, but this isn't the only place that you have to set it in here. And you can see the difference here was this. Let me see. Let's get rid of this node. Well, we'll just move the node editor over for a second. And let's see what these differences are. That's one second to render that scene at 10 passes. And this in CPU mode, it takes, let's see. Yeah, this would be a pretty, it was 1.02. Well, it took four. Point four, almost four and a half seconds. So it kind of varies between five and six times as fast I've found on depending on what you're rendering. But it makes a big difference as far as operating the system. And in fact, even when I'm recording these lessons, you'll find on a couple of an old, couple older lessons when I was running cycles at the same time and recording, my voice gets all broken up because of the performance demands by the CPU. So this really helps that out. But uh, there's something you have to look at as well. You have to be over here in user preferences first and then come down here and over here you see you either have CUDA, OpenCL or none. All right, that's by default your user preference is going to be set here at none so only the CPU is running. Well in fact we'll save that just for a second and then notice immediately that goes away. You, well it might be there for experimental but we, we don't want to work with experimental mode for what I'm doing so but you go into supported and it doesn't exist. You can't change it. So you'll have to go into your user preferences first and change it. Now one thing to look for is yours might show up a couple different ways. You might not see CUDA in there and you might not even see OpenCL. You might just see CPU. So and in order for all these to be enabled you have to make sure that you have your late, the latest drivers for your card and also if you want CUDA to be enabled you have to make sure you have a NVIDIA card because CUDA is a NVIDIA specific driver. OpenCL is kind of a it's, it's a driver for basically all GPU based cards but CUDA is much more well developed and so I would highly recommend using CUDA so it knows about my GT4, GTX 470 there's much faster cards on the market already but you can see this is quite fine for performance so then when you save it in here then you see the GPU option well it actually comes up as CPU until you go back and then change it to GPU compute so you have to set it in both places in order to make it work and you can see that is quite powerful and you know I've had like I said between five and six times typically is what I get performance wise well if I'm gonna do a long animation over the course of the night that's the difference between maybe five and six hours versus one hour to complete an animation of something yeah so huge huge difference usually you don't see gains like that you know you might see 20 percent increase in performance in something but going to a gpu is a makes a huge difference and then we can do the really fun stuff so uh, now you know how to use the basic materials and since you know how to edit and model and animate in the whole nine yards you guys can do like a boatload of cool stuff by now but we're not done we're gonna be doing a whole lot more stuff because really I'm just starting the beginning of my intermediate tutorial series we'll I'll be doing a whole series of intermediate and then advanced tutorials and when I get into the advanced tutorials that's gonna be more gears towards you have a really solid foundation in blender but in those series we're gonna be dealing a lot more with math and physics and engineering so we can do just much more realistic uh, animations instead of just saying oh we're gonna, we're gonna rotate this around the circle three times we're gonna actually do it so we're doing with angular velocities angular accelerations and we take all forces things of that will take all that into account and then that's how you can really make much much more realistic looking simulations okay well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson